Welcome to the Palace of Mega Pixels. This is Super Mega Grand Brothers Turbo. Welcome to Super Mega Crash Brothers Turbo. I'm your host, Stephen White, and with me, as always, is Todd Stark. Hello. And we have a special guest with us uh, today in the Palace of Mega Pixels. He's a YouTuber who does game videos and reviews on the channel Pixel Pixel. Please welcome Decoy. Hey. How you doing? I'm all right. Welcome. So uh, tell everyone who might be unfamiliar with your uh, channel a little bit about yourself and what you do over there. Well, uh, I'm pretty much stuck doing mostly Xbox videos. It's its own little fan base. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm small, but I'm slowly growing up. Uh, for a while, my main thing was doing mod videos. Right. And I'd like to get back to that, but right now, my main focus is the Xbox Game Pass and letting people know what's good on there and what sucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a, a pretty good idea because we've we've discussed it here on the show before. Is it worth the value? that they're actually giving you so that's that's actually a good idea i kind of like that I, I was actually surprised because when i went into it the only reason i got it was sea of thieves came out mm -hmm. and all my buddies are on the sea of thieves hype train and i noticed something whenever all my friends are st like stoked about a game it's probably not worth getting right <laughs> so i was like uh you know i'm gonna go with game pass it's gonna be on there I can get six months of Game Pass for the same price of buying the game. Mm -hmm. Way better off. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it was the right choice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we were even discussing that, too. It was like 10 bucks for a game. Yeah. It yeah. seems like the smarter way to go. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it, I, I feel like it helps get, uh, you know, Microsoft's own studios, gets their game out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, anytime you subscribe to something Microsoft has, that's money for them. And, but, you know, like a third-party person, they probably wouldn't want to, no, I'm not just going to let you give my game away yeah. all the time. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely not. Now, what actually got you uh, started on doing game videos and stuff like that on YouTube? Now, there's a video on my channel. Um, it's like GTA 5 Redneck Rampage. Mm -hmm. And that video was mostly recreating something that had happened spontaneously before. And all my buddies were like, oh, if only we could have recorded that. That would have been amazing. <laughs> I was like, well, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to go buy this stuff so I can record. Yeah. And then uh, it's been kind of fun ever since. Yeah. Just uh, just kind of became a hobby that turned into something more, huh? Yep. Well, that's good, That's though. how it starts. Yeah. That's usually how it does start. That's how masturbation started for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for sharing that. <laughs> the more uh, you know, right? Right. Uh, where did your uh, name decoy originate? So when I first got an Xbox years ago and got into online of course i hopped on the online bandwagon way after everybody else mm -hmm. so i was sitting there trying to pick out what my gamer tag was going to be i was like well I, I have no idea you know the best i'm going to do in multiplayer is distract people i'm going to be a freaking decoy while everybody <laughs> else is killing people <laughs> right so i, I kind of got stuck with decoy after that not bad yeah i mean it's better than the one they give you like randy seven five three five nine yeah, but oh, then you can cool. change it. Why do they always do that? Like you can change your name one time, but they don't let you pick your first name. Yeah, it's they give you one that's just yeah. terrible. <laughs> uh, now, was this actually something that you had a passion for originally, or did were there any other ideas that kind of came about first before doing that? Well, I, I had like a lot of little ideas of things that I wanted to do, but it's just a matter of getting all my buddies together to help me make something mm -hmm. is a nightmare. Oh yeah, I oh, know yeah. that feeling. <laughs> So, uh, now you said earlier that you're dedicated to Xbox. Was that was there a particular reason just Xbox? So when we came into like the next generation of consoles, because that's where a lot of my recording is now. Mm -hmm. I, I was looking at getting a PlayStation. I was right on the fence of going PlayStation rather than Xbox. And then Bethesda announced mods for Fallout 4 were going to be on Xbox, mm -hmm. and they didn't mention crap about PlayStation. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Bethesda is my 
favorite game studio. So, and I wasn't missing out on mods. Fair right. enough. <laughs> and, you know, they did. I think they eventually brought them to PS4, but it was like really just like stripped took down forever, version of everything, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't think they allowed everything like no. Xbox did. No, because I, I noticed that there were a lot of... When the, when the announcement hit, yeah, it was like, oh, everybody's getting them. I was like, I, did, I haven't seen them. I was like, no, <laughs> PC's got them. <laughs> yeah, PC always gets them. Yeah. Now, have you ever considered doing any other platforms? What I'd love, I'd love to be able to do PC. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, PC beats everything. Yeah. But it is a really expensive thing to get into. Yes, it absolutely. Is. No, that's yeah, what I'd like to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've dabbled in it. And I guess... I, something I've told Todd and everybody here before is it's prying myself away from a console. You know, the PC is not where I'm usually comfortable playing a game. It's on the couch with a console. And I guess if I could set it up to where it would work on the couch in front of yeah. the TV, then, yeah, I could probably play more PC. But it's just not where I'm comfortable. Right. So I have to work on that, too. Uh, is there any other content that you're actually working on for your channel right now? So, my subscribers don't know it yet, but I, I will be changing the name of my channel in the future. Okay. I'm not going to say what that is, just because God knows someone to snipe it. <laughs> that makes me mad. <laughs> but I'm going to branch a little bit away from gaming. I'm still going to do gaming videos every week, but I want to get into trading cards. Not like okay. specifically Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic. But back when I was growing up, I feel old now, but in the, <laughs> the early 90s, mm -hmm. trading cards were the thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we had hook trading cards, Terminator trading cards. Whatever came out, there were trading cards for mm -hmm. it. Yep. And so I've been collecting up a bunch of unopened trading card packs that I'm going to open on the channel just so people can see what there was at one point. Nice. I even have uh, the California Raisins found an old oh, thing nice. of trading oh, cards for that. Nice. A whole box of them unopened. Very nice. So, How do you go about finding this stuff? Everything's on the internet. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You, you should look up uh, Garbage Pail Kids. I think we oh. mentioned them uh, last, last week. week. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're not hard to find. I, I mean, it's the older ones that are hard. Yeah, because I think they – didn't they do a, a recent uh, revival of those? I think they did, think some, they did. some new stuff with it yeah. in the last year. So, yeah, they probably wouldn't be too hard. But some of the older ones, like I said, might be a little – I, I got all sorts of stuff ready to open. I got Star Wars, Star Trek, mm -hmm. uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. <laughs> just all sorts of weird stuff. You actually made me remember. Do you guys remember? I think it was like, it's still the trading cards. You get trading cards, but it was like He-Man. And there may have been other trading card sets with it. But you get a book. And there were stickers. Yeah. And you put oh, yeah. them in the book and then yeah. create the story sticker books yeah the sticker books i remember yeah <laughs> you always had to get them because you had you got to fill up your book you gotta you gotta, you gotta fill make the story out so yeah that you just had the outline back a little bit. <laughs> the person like sitting there fighting uh it's outside of uh, what the castle gray skull mm -hmm. <laughs> where you'd put he-man right see this is what we had to entertain ourselves as children yeah, yeah. we didn't have the internet we, we didn't had have no, phones we didn't. and internets and stuff we had a five dollar walkie-talkie mm -hmm. that had spider-man's face on it yeah and you went and hid in the woods from each other and you <laughs> called each other on it and then you went and did sticker books we're really showing mm -hmm. our age right now. yeah <laughs> i feel 75 all right well We'll, we'll move on. Uh, last question I got for you is, what have you been playing lately? So, just this morning I uploaded my review for State of Decay 2. Okay. And I, I tried putting it off because I knew there were bugs with it. Mm -hmm. Right. And I started playing it right before they came out with a 20 gig patch. And last night I, I went to finish getting the last few clips I needed. Went to start it and it goes, oh, you got a 20 gig update. You can't play it. Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. You yank the Ethernet cord out. There Let me go. get the rest of this footage. So the game actually was pretty good, and I'm going to assume that after this update, it'll be a lot better. Yeah. But it actually got a lot of hate. It really did. And I've, it deserves some of it, but some of the hate it got was just purely due to ignorance. Okay. People hating on the multiplayer, but they didn't understand it was host-based rather than server-based. Oh, okay. Which is horrible. Host-based games suck. Mm -hmm. Well, that and that game can't be reviewed in a week. You know what I mean? No. Like, you no. can't give an accurate review for that game and in a week. What kills me is a lot of people who review something, they won't play it all the way through. They might play it for a couple hours. Oh, this is what I think. Mm -hmm. I, I refuse to 
give a review for something unless I've beat the game. Yeah. I mean, I've done some early pre beating the game, but it's very rare. You know, I've I've got to have a decent feel for the game. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I agree. I mean, if you really want to know and understand the game and give a proper review, yeah. you got to get into it. You got to go deep. Yeah. I so, gave my review for God of War like I but I was 10 or 12 hours in. Yeah. Like and it's you not spent like, the entire weekend playing it. Yeah. So I had a good feel for the game. Mm-hmm. But I hadn't beat it yet. But Yeah. So what have you been playing, Todd? I got my platinum on God of War. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Then I started uh, a, a Way Out. I don't know if you out. played A Way Out yet. Not yet. It's pretty cool. Played it, played it with my little girl. Probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> probably shouldn't have A lot of cussing. Uh, then I started, uh, well, I picked it back up, Detroit Become Human. Mm-hmm. Started playing that again. Okay. Love the story. Really more along the lines of Heavy Rain than um, what Beyond Two Souls was. Yeah. Really, yeah. I actually saw a impression video, I guess would be the best way for it, of that game, mm-hmm. and the guy was being harsh. Dude, they either you like it or you don't. Yeah. And all of his games have been like that. And I guess what he was kind of pointing out, and I was trying to understand it from a game player perspective, like what was the director thinking of at the time? Trying to get you to understand the menial tasks of washing dishes or taking out the trash and all that stuff. Doing that for a reason. Right. That's what he was bitching about. He was like, this is mundane no, garbage. No, but that's the beauty part of that game. That's Yeah, that was kind of what I was thinking. I was like, but isn't that the point? You're yeah. supposed to understand and kind of be in their yes. shoes for a moment. You're to in say, a robot shoes who this guy, yeah. who coincidentally his name is Todd. He's a redneck, <laughs> just alcoholic. That's what he is. There's <laughs> he, a lot of Todd jokes. I don't know if you've yeah, seen Deadpool 2 I know yet, it, but. dude. He's just, oh, when I heard it, I was like, no, damn it. But when you clean the house up, you know, you're tidying the rooms and everything like that. Mm-hmm. You can miss things. And if you miss them, like if you don't look around the room enough and clean everything up, you're going to miss unlocking this thing, mm-hmm. right? So there is a reward for doing everything. And you also, like, just for example, like I'm cleaning up the thing and I open a drawer to put it in there. Oh, look, there's a gun with some antidepressants. So you learn that about whoever you're looking at, right? So yeah. these mundane chores open up other things. Okay. So for this, I mean, I can understand somebody playing this game and it's not for them. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? They don't like it. That's fine. And Heavy Rain was the same way. I think they're, you know, some people, they got some tens. They stayed around sixes and sevens the whole time. That yeah. game is great, you know? So I guess David Cage has always got hate. Yeah. I mean, it's again, it's not a game for everybody. No, it's not. Call of Duty is not a game for everybody. No. Mm-mm. So, by the way, if you hear meows in the background, just ignore it. It's this little orphan cat that won't go away. Stephen's got gas. She's just Kitty gas. She's just wanting attention, and we're all sitting here, and no one's paying attention to her, and that's the problem. Yeah. So she's going to be well, vying for our want, fiction. She didn't want to do anything to do with anybody a minute ago. No, she didn't. But now that we're doing something, she wants our yeah. attention. Hey, look at me. Because we're not me. paying attention to her. Uh, I played, I uh, finished Trine. I played uh, Trine 2, went on to that. I don't know, man. I guess playing them back-to-back is not a good idea because you kind of get burnt out on them. Well, you've already played them. Yeah. How many times? Just, Three like, times? I just beat this game, and now I'm playing this game. It's just got different enemies. It's uh, prettier looking, but... Uh, so I was trying to trudge through it uh, while I was waiting for God of War to upload. And... Then I played a little Friday the 13th. Got to see the new adjustments they made to that. How? What do you think? The single player campaign. I don't know. Have you played Friday the 13th? All my friends play it mm-hmm. all the time. I haven't got around to it. Okay. Well, the they added single player challenges where they essentially set up a uh, scenario in which you have to kill the counselors. Okay. Yeah. And it starts. There's ten challenges, and it really does go from very easy to very difficult because right. the idea is is if you want to do it right, you cannot let them know you're there. You have to be as stealthy as hell. So the very first one, I think we saw a video of it. Right. I think they even put it on YouTube. The dude taking a is, piss. Yeah. There's a guy out car. taking a piss while the other guy's fixing the car. Yeah. So he goes walks off. Boom. Stab him. You go over to the other guy. Drop the car on him. Boom. Done. You're done. And you've done that. But they do give you other challenges to go along with it to say, okay, go kill this guy while he's taking a smoke break or wait until the guy has actually fixed the car, then kill him. So they give you other options to kind of play it up a little bit and give you some more extra experience points. So it's fun to do that 
and really kind of add that challenge to it. Would you compare it to like the what the Predator challenges on Batman? Uh, mm, I don't know. I don't think I would. I, I, I that, guess I guess there would be some similarities to it, but right. these are very. I don't know. There, it's very calculating because there there's a pattern obviously right. to the characters, but. They, I mean, all it takes is one little slip up, one noise, and someone hears you, and then it just ruins the whole thing. It's just like, you son of a bitch, i got to go chase you down now. Right. And then they'll escape. So there were times, I know I've replayed one or two of the missions several times because it's like, I just I just want to kill this. I just want to kill this kid. Yeah. He just won't die. <laughs> or he keeps seeing me. What am I doing wrong? And I know, I think it was the very last one, I still have not gotten a perfect on it because I don't know what to do. It's, I mean, it literally involves every kid so there's like eight people okay and it's it's a scene straight out of uh friday the 13th part four so i don't if y'all have ever seen it this is the the scene it's where they're all dancing and then the twins are, are kind of getting everybody's attention and then the one girl gets jealous she goes out to the lake to go lay out in the the raft and then the boyfriend goes after her so then the other twin takes one crispin glover's character upstairs and then the others are just like, I'm going home. I'm going to go do this. So everybody scatters. So you got the one girl out in the raft, got the boyfriend coming after her. You got the other girl walking home. Then you've got two people upstairs doing their business. Two other people are, are kind of messing around, but they're kind of going back and forth from upstairs to downstairs. And then you've got one guy watching the video downstairs. So everybody's active. So how do you get all these characters killed with no one seeing you? That's where it gets tricky. The ones outside's easy. It's once you have to go inside is where it gets really, really tricky. So, but I like that. I like that they yeah. gave you a challenge because you have to like be very skillful and say, "What am I going to do here?" So, and and obviously you have different ways to kill, and that's one of the other challenges they'll kind of lay out to you is you have to kill somebody a specific way. Right. So that's even more challenging. I think there was one. I don't think it was in this one. I think it was one prior to it. Is you had to uh, use a wheelbarrow to kill one of the characters. I'm like, where the hell is a wheelbarrow? Right. And then luckily I happened to just spot it and there was a rock in it. And I was like, okay. So I just got to get him over here. That was not easy. I had to literally grab him and take him over there. <laughs> anyway, let's get on to the news. Stupid the cat. News. <laughs> if there was an edit in there, I'm sure there is. The cat cut us off. That's why we don't want her around. Uh, all right. Uh, what do we got in news? Uh, first that we got is, uh, I'm sure we've actually reported about this in some capacity before that this was coming down the pipeline, but it is now official that blue hole games, the developer behind PUBG, has indeed filed a copyright violation lawsuit against Epic games, the developers of Fortnite. Now blue hole is requesting that the court make a determination on whether or not Fortnite copied the fundam fundamentals of PUBG when Epic Games developed their Battle Royale mode. How this will play out in court will be interesting, but in my opinion, I'm actually going to be surprised if this case isn't dismissed fairly quickly because isn't everybody doing Battle Royale modes now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I just I feel like how are you going to put a copyright on a game mode? Yeah, and like PUBG pretty much copied another game, Battle Royale. They ain't the first yeah. Battle Royale game. No, you know? no, no. Oh. Actually, if you look back, I think the first games that did Battle Royale were wrestling games. Yeah, <laughs> so. good point. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. I, I feel like it's going to get swept under the rug. It's just going to be a futile effort on their part, and we won't hear about it again, which is fine by me because I'm getting tired of hearing about them both. Uh, next thing we got is uh, we got a new look at Mega Man 11 this week. There was a new trailer. It showcased some of the new Robot Masters and their respective levels. Uh, we also got to see one of the new features in action known as the Gear System. Were you this is a uh, new power that has three modes called Power, Speed, and Double. The Power Gear allows a more powerful charge to the Mega Buster. Speed Gear allows time manipulation for help on trickier platforming sections. And then the Double Gear activates at critical health and allows Mega Man to activate both power and speed simultaneously. The game looks to be a welcome addition to the franchise, and if you're getting it on the Switch, you can go get yourself a special 30th anniversary Mega Man 11 Amiibo to go with it. No, thank you. No, thank you? No. You don't want a Mega Man I don't Amiibo? Want no. Just a little collectible? No, it's just, no? uh-uh. All right, fine. Well, got... if you want the game, it comes out on all platforms on October 2nd. So. I think that all those additions, though, are going to help that game, like, add 
I'm sure. Just do it. And the, and the game is actually relatively uh, affordable. It's only twenty nine ninety nine. So pre order now, if you're a Mega Man fan. I'm a Mega Man fan. I like Mega Man. Yeah, you love it. I was I was asking. Are, were you, are you happy? a fan of Mega Man? I, I always sucked at it. I always sucked. <laughs> I was never really good at it as I was younger, but I always really liked to try to try and get better at it. And over the years, I've gotten better at some of them. I think uh, nine and ten were just they were brutal. They made them hard. So I never. I don't think I ever actually finished them. So I just remember when I was a kid. I always thought Mega Man looked cool. Hmm. But I, I could never play the games that well. Yeah. I was too distracted playing Zelda. <laughs> yeah, I love hey, Zelda. Another great game. So I don't, I don't fault you there. Uh, next thing I got is Microsoft announced a new rewards app for certain Xbox One users that will allow players to redeem acquired points and get exclusive offers before anyone else. This app can be downloaded via the Xbox Insider Hub and is currently in beta, hence why it's only certain users. However, Microsoft said that there will be uh, more players that it will become available to in the coming weeks. This app is coming off the heels of the announcement that the Microsoft Rewards is going to be absorbing the Mic- or Xbox Live Rewards program, merging them into one. Any points not used in the Live program will be converted to the new Rewards program. Cat, you're just you're you're going to cut me off again, and you just you just got to go. You got to go. Thank you. Okay. I'm not being mean to the cat people. You just he you just got to trust me that yeah. she 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 cut our fo- she cut off our show. She I mean, cut I off even, our sharp sharp. Sharp sharp. sharp, sharp, sharp. <laughs> you see what happened? I couldn't even get it out. Cat got your tongue. She did. <laughs> cat got my tongue. She just she killed it. All right, uh quick hits. Quick hits. We got the uh announcement for Fallout 76. Yes. What are we thinking about this? I don't know, man. It's just like it's real uh it's, what is it? You know, like yeah. is it Vault 76? Is it, um, I've heard a rumor that it's only going to take place in a vault, but I would not think that that's right. You know, like yeah, I just that can't see that be, I can't imagine yeah. that would be a good It'd choice. Be, yeah. be a fallout shelter all over again. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't see that. No, I don't see being, that being a smart move. No. Nah. So I don't, I don't know. What is it? Is it, is it 20, I mean, when did the 2076? I mean, when are we talking here? I don't know. Uh, now, Vault 76 was supposed to be the first vault. That got opened after the Great War. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you're part of the first group that has to resettle the world. Nice. Okay. So it's going to take place before the other Fallout games. So that might be pretty cool. Yeah. So now, this is trying to get your feel for the new world. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I think around that time is when ghouls started happening and all that. So if you actually do get to leave the <clears> vault, <throat> which I think that should be a safe assumption. Yeah. There's yeah. no way you're staying You better in the let vault. me leave the vault. To be the first ones to go out and interact with other people. You're mm-hmm. the first people that ever came out of a vault. So anyone that is out there already, they're going to be pretty freaking shocked. Yeah. Like, this has never happened before. Sure. So I, I'm excited about it. I love Fallout. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, Fallout 4 was my first uh, game into the series, and I was just, I was like, why have I not played this before? Yeah, Fallout 3, <laughs> I will never forget coming out of the vault for the first time and just oh, seeing yeah. how big the world was, man. That is mm-hmm. one of those experiences, like, for the first time you played Zelda, you know, like you yeah. always remember it. I'll never forget coming out of the vault. That's awesome. Uh, next thing I got is there was a trailer for the Lego DC Super Villains game, which I don't recall asking for. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> I did? Yes, you said something about it three weeks ago. No, I was talking about I was playing Lego Marvel Superheroes Heroes 2. Oh, you wanted this game. Nah, I don't <laughs> Like you recall. just actually said Lego but, hey, Marvel. It's for somebody, okay? <laughs> I might play it at some point, but right now I'm just like, eh. Uh, Dead by Daylight announced its new characters, or its first new characters. It was the Clown and Kate Denson. They I mean, the Clown looked pretty cool. Are you a player of Dead by Daylight? I haven't played it yet. haven't played it. It's, it's not a bad little game. Uh, it's something I got into, I think, after Friday the 13th. And I can see elements of both saying, you know what, this would be good over here, and that would be good over here. So it's fun. You know, I think for when it comes to actually group playing with people, Dead by Daylight is far superior <laughs> because you have less trolls to deal with. Right. So at least I, I've never come I still haven't played game. Friday the 13th. Well, you need to. I know. I want you to. You need to. I want to. <laughs> I want somebody to play with. I don't know. Could could we play together? Oh, yeah, that's true. 
Well, we'll get John to intervene and let you connect to his. But, well, I can't then, even connect to John. Well, what about Heath? Can't connect. I can't, dude. I am not kidding when I say the only person that my internet will even remotely work with is Beth. I don't know why that's the one that got picked. Well, we'll have to find somebody else. We'll, <laughs> it's crazy. We'll, just, <laughs> we'll figure it out. Uh, the next thing we had is Monster Hunter World added a new uh, Elder Dragon, the Lunastra. I hope I'm saying that right. Which looks to be the female version of the Teostra, which is uh, the big flaming red lion esque elder dragon one of the final bosses and she comes with a blue flame not not the red flame is it ice flames well you know the blue but it's blue that's all i can say blue flames i'm just like picturing that it freezes everything Nah, i want it to well just like you know the what the night what the night king the dragon that he's got now on Uh game of thrones yeah that's not how it works that's Uh, what i want it to do though (laughs) okay uh, pre-orders for the Atari VCS actually crashed Indiegogo. They wow. like far surpassed their goal. So I think what? they're up to, they were looking for 500 and they sold. No, I think six. it was like two, I think it was like a hundred thousand. I could be wrong. I remember looking at it. It was like a hundred thousand is what they were asking for. And they had like 2 million crushed. Wow. It. So they had well beyond everything they wanted. Uh, leaked information says that the next Assassin's Creed game will be called Odyssey and will be set in ancient Greece. I've heard think? this. Another Assassin's Creed game. Yay. Yay. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> uh, I guess. I didn't play the last one. I haven't yet. I'll get it on, you know, discount day or something like that. I think it can. Why is it that Assassin's Creed, a month after it gets released, it's always discounted to $29.99? Every time. Well, you, you wait long enough on Xbox, they, they tend to give away every Assassin's Creed game. That's yeah. true. You just got to wait a couple games down the road and, oh, all right, now I can play it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else I got? Oh, uh, Fortnite got shopping carts. Yeah. Wow. I don't know. <laughs> I just I saw the headline. I was like, all right, good for you. To go with got, the rocket Got packs? shopping carts. I See, again, this is why we need John. John's our Fortnite guy. And I don't know. Why do you need shopping carts in this game? I don't know. Like <laughs> Keep your, your pinatas in, yeah, I guess. I don't know. Uh, Microsoft is offering free games with purchase of an Xbox One right now with State of Decay 2 being offered actually before this podcast drops. So if you kind of missed it by this time, you're probably going to be missing out. But <laughs> uh, from the 3rd to the 9th, you can actually get Red Dead Redemption for free if you get yourself an xbox one so go uh, go look at that if you're you're possibly interested and uh tech land dropped some uh, f- uh dlc for dying light it's the last free dlc pack they're gonna release it's got new weapons a new character and a new buggy a buggy a buggy did following. y'all did you ever play uh, dying light oh yeah yeah that was did blast. you play what was that what was that dlc called the following, the following. yeah yeah where you got to play with the buggies and all i that? haven't played that part you didn't no no it was when i that. moved out didn't i don't have good internet oh that's right so. i thought it was pretty fun it was a, it was nice to kind of come back into that world for a little bit oh yeah yeah so i, I dug it uh rampage is coming home to digital download on the 26th of june and then blu-ray and dvd on july 17th have you seen that movie yet i did not but i want to see it I heard it's good. I just, you know, I heard people hating on it because they just gonna hate. But it's a big monster movie. I love big yeah. monster movies. So I'm gonna enjoy this. I don't give a shit how stupid it might <laughs> be plot wise. It's like, oh, these. Have you ever seen a Godzilla movie? Yeah. Their plots make no sense. No. Okay, it's fine. You're just there for the big monsters and the destruction. It's fine. Uh, and finally, uh, the Sonic the Hedgehog movie is apparently looking at Jack Black, Ed Helms, and or Paul Rudd for their lead role, which I'm assuming they mean Sonic. Think he would be good for? I think Jack Black would be perfect for Sonic. Yeah, I, I can see him be more like Knuckles or something. Yeah. I, I don't know about. I don't know. I can Maybe see him we'll, as like Tails. Yeah. I don't know. Paul Rudd kind of seems like he would be a good Sonic. He'd have that heroic esque. Yeah. I don't know. He might the be voice about him. Man, though. So, but again, I don't know if that's what. Oh, the cat coming. Nowhere. Talking about or not. I hope we're still recording, cat. You're gonna have to go on. You're gonna have to go on. See, the cat's just—it's ruining everything. It's ruining the whole show. Ugh. Jesus. 
I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on anymore. You're, you're hearing all this. I'm going to leave all this in so everybody can just know that we're, we're, we're battling a cat. We're battling a cat because she wants to be all up in our space while we're recording. Everything seems fine. God, I've got cat scratch fever. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> before our crazy... Uh, Jesus. All right, anyway, uh, James Marsden actually looks to have been signed on for the human lead in the role of, in the Sonic movie. Uh, if you don't know who he is by name, he's been in uh, Westworld. He was Cyclops in the X-Men movies, mm-hmm. or the old X-Men movies. Uh, that guy. Yep, that guy. That guy. He's all right. Yeah, I like that guy. But I'm just not digging the Sonic movie. I don't... <laughs> why, why does there need to be I a mean, Sonic he movie? I mean, it was good to see him in Wreck-It Ralph. Stay yeah. there. Just That's where you belong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just uh, this whole blending live-action CG... Yeah, it just sounds like it sounds like another Smurfs waiting. I to think happen. so. They already yeah. screwed the Smurfs up. Yeah, so it's gonna happen again. I guess it worked okay with the first Garfield because uh, no, I'm yeah. but that was, at least that works because Garfield had a you know a human. Uh, where was besides Gargamel? Where were humans in uh, Smurfs? You know what I mean? Like I know there was the, there the, really the, weren't any. Right, there was the little boy. I guess right the the knight. Mm-hmm. The little squire. Well, yeah, right? I guess there were. Some but that was it. At some point, took I don't their know. asses to New York City. That's that's a lot of. I don't know. I don't know anything about the Smurfs. It's been a long time. Yeah. All right. Uh, next bit of news, and you're gonna love this. I'm gonna love it. You're gonna love it. I hope there were huge announcements this week made in the world of Pokemon. Oh damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Got me. Now, the first was the announcement of a new free-to-play smartphone game called Pokemon Quest. The game has the aesthetic design mirroring that of Minecraft and will allow players to battle mm-hmm. wild Pokemon and collect items to power up the ones on your team. It seems to be a very basic and straightforward version of the usual games meant to possibly be an introductory game into the franchise, but it will also be available to play on the Switch for free. The next announcement was the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee for the Nintendo Switch. These uh, games seem to be a remake of the original Red and Blue games, as the setting is in the Kanto region from those games, and uh, even a few others in the series. Now, unlike those games, your starter Pokemon is essentially the one you have on your case. So if you pick the Pikachu, you're going to have Pikachu. If you pick the Eevee, you got the Eevee. And uh, you can actually customize your Pokemon that you get clothes and whatnot. Because why wouldn't you? You know. Yeah, I mean, does Pikachu wear clothes? Uh, apparently he does. No. He does now. Socks? Well, I, I think it's more like hats and scarves and things oh. like that. Yeah. I don't even care, really. I don't know. No, he's got socks and sandals. Yeah. He's that kind of Pokemon. <laughs> he's that kind. <laughs> he's that he's guy. Going, he's going, this is beach Pikachu. <laughs> now, outside of being a remake of sorts, there will be some additions uh, that will make the experience unique, such as a multiplayer mode where actually two trainers can play simultaneously. Uh, plus, there will be Pokemon that appear on the overworld map, and you'll actually have the option of catching them from there as opposed to just going after them. Lastly, there will be connectivity to the Pokemon Go app, allowing players to catch Pokemon on the go, then bringing them back to their game at home. There will also uh, be an announcement, or there was an announcement, of the Pokeball Plus controller, which seems to be very reminiscent of the uh, old Tamagotchi games. So you put your Pikachu in your ball, and then you carry him around with you. And you can talk to him, and everything. it's just a little ball that just sits there and makes noises. And I don't, there didn't seem to be any other reason to do that other than just to seem like you're crazy walking around town. With this little ball going Pikachu at you every five minutes. That's stupid. But it's for those people who just want to be in it. The people who who played Pokemon Go and ran across the freeway to catch a a Mew. And got run over. Yeah. It's those people. You played Pokemon Go. Briefly, but I did not do anything that stupid. Heath (laughs) actually made it to work for a solid month on time because he would get up four hours early and go to the square and catch Pokemon. Mm Mm-hmm. But see, I wasn't that dedicated. No. I, would, yeah, so. I barely get up that time for work. Like, I get paid to go to work. You do? All right, it's time for a little truth or trash. Truth you can play or along trash. Too. If you think this is a good rumor or a bad rumor, just say it's truth or I'll trash. I'll go first since okay. he's the oh, guest. Okay. I've only got two this week because there wasn't a whole lot in the rumor categories. But, first one, there will be a remastered version of Fallout 3 being announced very soon. Oh, I could see that. 
I want that. Do too. Uh-huh. I, I really do. Okay. I'm going with true with that. True. That's what say, I want it to be. Yeah, I'm going to say truth too. Okay. Because Bethesda's got that show coming up at E3. They do. And they're going to announce a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. That would be a, a nice little segue from yeah. Fallout 76. Yeah, I think so. So, okay. Uh, this one is a, kind of an interesting little rumor. Uh, Microsoft actually fired Xbox support employees then replaced them with volunteers. Hmm. I mean, Microsoft. No. I wouldn't yeah. put it past them. I was going to say, Microsoft, they've done <laughs> crazier things, you know? So, uh, truth? Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm going to say trash just because we haven't heard. Like, okay. okay. Yeah, Fair I feel enough. like it's trash. Otherwise, you know, be a lot more news about it. Yeah, because, you know, as soon as they start firing 200 people, mm. that comes out everywhere. And this is hate everywhere, you know? All right. That's fair enough. Fair enough. All right, that's all I got. And like I said, it wasn't wasn't very much in the the rumor bin this week, but I do have some weird news. Oh, I love weird news. All right. So everyone from Nintendo to Atari has been dropping those nostalgia bombs. You know the classic consoles and the rehashes and what what did Sega do this week? The the collections thing. Yeah. yeah. Now one console during all of this decided to rise from the ashes and make its return as well. Can you guess what that console what the, is? Um, Jaguar. No. Oh, mm. If I'm going to pick something weird and out there, I'm going to go with Dreamcast. That's the one thing that it couldn't be. <laughs> no, you're both you're not going to believe this. And television is oh, being revived. <laughs> we want to have that one golf game. <laughs> yeah. Thanks to Tommy Tallarico, whose name actually may ring a bell as he was known uh, in the 90s as a fairly well-renowned video game music composer and sound designer in the 90s. He worked on games like Earthworm Jim, Out of This World, and the Mortal Kombat trilogy, among many other things. Tallarico actually purchased the rights to the console following the passing of Keith Robinson, who was Mr. Intellivision himself, and even tapped some of the original console team to bring the console back to life. Now, one interesting feature to this upcoming system is that consumers will have the option or actually be able to pick what games they want versus just having to wade through a sea of games. So you'll take an SD card, go to an online store, pick what games you want, download them there, put it in the system, and then boom. Okay, so all they're pretty much doing is taking the online store away and putting it somewhere else for you to go wade through and then come back. Yeah. (laughs) But beyond that, it's coming back. I know that everyone's excited about it in television. I know I'm not. No. And no word on pricing, release date, but they said there will be a big announcement on October trash. 1st. Can I just call this one trash? No, that's, <laughs> this is true. I want to put it in it. trash. It might this be is not true. a rumor. I just want to put it as trash. That well, is trash. If this happened on April 1st, then I would have said, yeah, yeah it's all, all lies. Oh, you know, you just said, uh, you were just talking about Pokemon or Let's Go Pikachu. Mm-hmm. You know, they dropped the or i guess rumors come out about it on uh april 1st mm-hmm. and everybody thought it was just kind of somebody being a troll yeah i'd read that is that the kitty getting nice yeah they, it was getting <laughs> nice uh speaking of pokemon i got one more for you but in yeah. the the weird news category but I, I thought this would be fun to talk about uh so in the world of pokemon you have pokemon you don't see, like, dogs and cats and regular animals. You see Pokemon. Those are the animals that are presented to you, correct? Yep. Correct. Okay. So, someone asked the question, would humans eat Pokemon? And then fans lost their minds. But wouldn't they? If it was a I cow would. Pokemon, I'd eat the <laughs> hell out of it. I mean, think about it. You've got a, a character called a grump pig that looks like a pig. I'm sure you could turn it into bacon I'm eating and it. some pork chops. Is there I don't a cow? think it's a little far fetched to have roast far fetched because he's a roast duck or a wild duck. Yeah, I mean, is there a, is there a cow? Yes, there are cows. I'm eating Taros. I'm eating Taros. He's a, he's a he's a bull, so he could be like a bison. Bison burgers. There you go. Yeah, that's Taros what I burgers. Yeah. Sorry so um, I know you probably wouldn't want to eat a Pikachu because he's a rodent. Yeah. And, you know, you don't want to... It wanna... depends on if you're from the Philippines. That's true. That's they true. They eat cook Pikachu <laughs> all the time. So, fair enough. So, wherever you want, yes, you can eat Pokemon. Get over yourself. Go out and catch you a Magikarp. They're stupid anyway. And uh, eat mm, that. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> all right, it's time for everybody's favorite new segment. 
I'd buy that for a dollar. Okay, I've got one item this week. I got five dollars. I think, I think you'll love them. I think you'll love them. So, like I said earlier, everyone and their mother went and pre-ordered an Atari VCS, but that was the only thing they were selling. They had on there a Atari 7800 hoodie that features the Atari name and a white logo with a color bar going from left to right and a nice little 7800 in the bottom right-hand corner of the logo. Mm-hmm. But if that doesn't cut it for you, they also had a 2600 model, which had the nice wood finish design all across the top, a little gold imprint in the hood, and just a, just a very nice little design, little Atari logo on the, the right breast there. On the breast. Get it all right now for the low, low price of fifty eight ninety nine. Two hoodies? For one. Oh, oh shit. shit. That's a bit much. Yeah. But it's an Atari hoodie. I mean, you almost had me with the wood, you know? Like, I got it, wood when you said that. Like, <laughs> You got to see the wood finish on that hoodie. I know. Like, I might drop a dollar. <laughs> but not $58? No, I'm not going to buy any hoodie for $58. But it's a name brand hoodie. Well, it's it's a, Atari. Atari. <laughs> That's, it's got an Atari name on it. And it's like, got wood finish. <laughs> No, no, no okay. I don't know. No. Well, I was trying. I was trying to sell you on this damn hoodie. You almost had me. I did, but not good enough. All right, well, no on the hoodie. That's fine. You going to pass on the hoodie? Oh, I don't want that. Okay. I, I'm pretty sure I can go find an Atari for 60 bucks. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, so no, no hoodies this week. All right, fine. All right, let's get on to our topic, and we're talking the Road to E3 Microsoft Edition today. We want to talk about what we feel that Microsoft is going to bring, should bring, what are they going to do at E3 this year? And so, this is a big E3 form. This is. They got to show out this year. So, uh, Decoy, what do you think? Well, there's already been leaks of three mm-hmm. Gears of War titles. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of get this impression that uh, Microsoft's just doing a spray and pray, hoping something will land. Yeah, right. I mean, a real-time strategy game. I love RTSs, but consoles are not really that strong they are it. not yeah it's not the right area mm-hmm. uh then what they're doing a battle royale one as well do we need more battle royale games yeah no. and there's oh God. there's that whole rumor and this actually makes me wonder if they're going to push more battle royale there was that rumor that there's going to be halo 6 there do you think yeah. that would be a battle royale well, too there's going to be battle royale in every single online shooter yeah. game it's just going to be in there by next year. Why does everybody get on this this train of what's popular and then kill it? They suffocate it. That's the problem. Yeah. I mean, it becomes were, oversaturation and nobody yeah. wants to do it anymore. Yeah. You know, I've heard, um, like he said, the the rumor for uh, a new Gears. And I heard, I guess one was what you just said, the real-time strategy. But I also heard uh, like a tactical shooter. Mm-hmm. you know for it you know i don't know that would that could work but yeah. like what does that what is that you know so i don't know i also heard you know of course you're going to see forza horizon 4 i guess mm-hmm. that'll be there i've heard a uh, big rumor of uh, sunset overdrive 2 that one would be good yeah see it, that is an awesome game yeah. yeah i've heard that that was the big rumor this week okay but i don't know like the from I guess what I was reading, there's not a lot of information. It's kind of like really hoping that it's there. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Who there's, knows? Uh, it's just a rumor. Yeah. I spotted also in that rumor, Ben, <laughs> that they're going to be releasing a new Perfect Dark. Yeah, I Rare, seen that too. Yeah. Which. They said the Coalition was possibly working on that. Mm-hmm. But doesn't the Coalition, didn't they work on Gears of War the last time? I'm not sure who did the I last one. They need a no, competent. I bet it was a Black Tusk Studio, uh, I think. Well, they need a competent developer behind yeah. that because that was a good game back when yeah and rare is not what it used to be no. so the first no. perfect dark was one of the best games mm-hmm. back then the second one it just went to crap yeah so here's hoping it to rise from the ashes and be be what it used to be yeah absolutely it's just hard to do that like it's almost like instead of being what it used to be just make it really good and make it something brand new well we'll, we'll see what they do because I didn't even feel like the their Killer Instinct model. No, no, they tried to copy attached. the old game. It yeah. felt like, just I don't know. Um, 
I also kind of feel like that they'll put a lot of focus on that new game controller they were talking about, that adaptive game controller. I think we reported it on a few weeks oh, ago. Oh, yeah, for the special yeah, needs. Yeah, I'm sure they'll showcase that for everybody. They could. Um, I don't know, because, you know, the last few E3s has been, like, just all games, all games. We don't want to see anything else. You know, they've totally cut out all kind of business reports during E3. Mm-hmm. Now, because you remember it used to be, Look at our chart. You know, every, all of them did that. This yeah. is how much we've sold. This is what we did. And now those are gone. And there's not much talking anymore. It used to be after that, after all that was gone, it was like, let's bring these developers up. Let's bring these guys up. Let them show their game. Now it's just like, here's five trailers in a row, and here's some gameplay. Very true. So I don't know if they're going to take time and show that controller. Well, and they, they could they have a presence at E3, floor. just not on stage. Yeah. So. But I mean, I, I I would have no doubt they'll have a big mixer presence there because yeah. they they push that hard at mm-hmm. PAX. So you'll see. It. I think this will be because they really do seem mixer seems to be taken off right now, and I don't. Well, everybody's really know. looking for something where they can jump in at the at the ground floor and work yeah. their way up. You know what I mean? Because I've I've noticed that some of my streamer friends have been making their way over to mixer. They're I mean they they might still be on Twitch, but I even heard, heard one today said that they're actually thinking about making the jump from Twitch to Mixer full-time. So I, I'm kind of curious to know what the difference is. You know, what, I mean, have you dealt with Mixer at all? I, I haven't messed with it. My internet sucks so bad that, mm-hmm. that you I can't. Huse net? <laughs> you got HughesNet? No, I got, <laughs> so I I got, got. crappy AT&T internet. Hmm. I got HughesNet. I, I, would, <laughs> I would love to have your crappy internet. <laughs> <laughs> it's slightly better than yours, but, yeah, I oh. guess it's – we don't have his. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, I – I've said it a thousand times on the show. Like, if you put a trash can on your roof, it's the same reception <laughs> as using it. But outside of Mixer, uh, I'm kind of curious if they might actually do a little bit more about the uh, the service you were talking about, the Game Pass. Oh, yeah, Game Pass. They, uh, what, what could they actually sell with that? Because sp- speaking of State of Decay just came out, and then Sea of Thieves, those have really been the only two big games that they've – released on that platform correct well okay as a, now, it's as a got first party release right it, it's got yeah. all of the gears of war games are on there mm-hmm. all the halo games are on there all like their big kind of exclusives mm-hmm. are on there like eventually when we get crackdown three it will be on there god knows when we're actually getting that mm-hmm. I'm i sure haven't even heard that name brought i think up i actually saw all. it might have been removed from the schedule right. yeah, it, but again got, that was a rumor so i didn't want to i'm pretty sure it got pushed way back yeah yeah it could uh, be for the next Xbox. Who knows? <laughs> uh, let's see. What else we got on there? I have no idea. So, it's a lot of small games on there. The big titles. I mean, we'll get whatever three Gears of War games are coming out with. Mm-hmm. They'll be on there. But it's just like the random little games that pop up. Sure. Those are the ones that matter. And they fly under the radar for the most mm, part. Right. Well, I guess my big question was is that with Sea of Thieves and State of Decay being the two that were they're not old games these are brand new new ones that were released simultaneously correct Mm -hmm. but they came with bugs right so is that something you think they might address at the show like hey we're here and you know we're releasing kind of subpar games but we'll fix it you know you think think that's something they'll do or say that they released a subpar game but they are but they'll they'll probably mention hey we're, we're working all the time to fix these. Or at least what I heard with Sea of Thieves is it was just kind of half a game. It really was. So it, it was, There wasn't much to it. Yeah. Uh, they just released a downloadable content with the the Hungering Deep or something yeah. like that. Yeah. I can't remember what it's called. I think what we were talking about. I remember reading it. I was going to ask, though, like, has, is Sea of Thieves still on there or did yeah. they swap it for State of Decay? No, they're both on there. They're both on there at the same time. Yeah. Okay. I wondered if they if they had a time period for each of their games, or if they were just going to leave them. I think they did say that their first party titles will remain on there okay. at all times. All right. So I think it'll be the third parties that cycle out every now and again. Right. But uh, any other big thoughts you think they might be bringing? Uh, there, there was another one. And I'm trying to remember what it was. I wish I'd have written it down. But there was a game that I might actually show during their presentation that actually kind of took me aback. Like. Okay, why why is that going to be on there for? It was um, a third party title. Cyberpunk. Uh, I don't think Anthem it was there. Anthem's going to be there. Um, because it had a big presence on their stage last mm. time, I believe. Am I right? Yeah, but um, it's EA, so yeah, EA's trying has to their distance himself now. I don't feel like it was EA though. I'm EA has their own show. Um, are you talking about uh, CD Project Red? 
with no. Cyberpunk because I've heard rumors that they're going to be showing it during um, the Xbox show. No, this was this was a game that just kind of I was surprised that it was on Xbox's right show. Like the, I felt like it belonged either on Nintendo's or Sony's, but I can't remember what it was. Is it a Japanese? Um, game because I've been hearing a lot of the it might be and that maybe RPG that's what Japanese games are going to be coming to Xbox or a few they want to get yeah. a bigger presence in Japan for some reason it, it might have been I, like I said I should have made a note of it but it did yeah. it kind of took me uh, off guard a little bit what is Blue Dragon is it Blue Blue Dragoon or Blue Dragon that sounds like an anime because I know that that's they've been talking about a game like Blue Dragoon Six or something like that mm-hmm. I can't remember what I read now. But I remember seeing that name brought up too. I mean, if you go in and you got a new Gears of War game, um, a new Halo game, Forza Horizon, even though I'm not really excited about that, I feel like they release that all the time. Hmm. And then, like, like say Cyberpunk or somebody like that rolls up, and then you got Anthem. They got a pretty solid show. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah, you know, this is the year they've got to show out. So hmm. why not bring your big guns this year? Everybody needs to. I think everybody's yeah. always watching on E3. That's where everybody wants to be wowed. Yeah, and that's that's how I feel too about E3. Mm-hmm. That's when you bring your big guns. Yeah. So uh, nobody has anything else to add. No, no. I'll move on. But I say they need to. <coughs> what they really need more than announcing a, a Halo or a Gears of War, they need their next Halo or Gears of War style game. They need their next big franchise. Right. Mm-hmm. To just come yeah. out of nowhere and blow everybody away. Yeah, it's what they need. Everything else is just kind of getting stale. It's just same yeah. crap yeah. over and over. I know, I, and I've said that a long time. That's why I haven't, um, because I got like I, I went into 360, and I thought, you know, I loved Alan Wake. I loved, uh, I didn't really like Gears One. I loved Gears Two. I didn't get to play Gears Three, but Gears Two was really good to me. Oh, the yeah. story was way better. Um, I can't think of any. I didn't play a lot of other games other than those games because it started getting to the point where they were like. Halo, Forza, Gears. Halo, Forza, Gears. You know, over and over and over. And I'm, I'm like you. Like they need to get some really good first-party studio stuff going and just wow us with that. Kind of mm-hmm. how Sony does. You know what I mean? Like they go out. They have, let's see, Days Gone, um, Horizon Zero Dawn, God of War. Even though it's an old franchise, it's redone totally. Um, that's all new stuff, you know, like yeah. brand new stuff that's not recycled old stuff. So they need to take a play, you know, like a page out of their playbook. I think they need to start now. Yeah. If not, it's just going to be. I mean, what are you doing? I mean, I mean, they have the opportunity, and if yeah. you actually look through Rare's catalog, they've yeah. got some games that they can Where's start the new ra- rummaging through. Yeah. Come on, shit. I want. So to- if if the perfect dark rumor is true good you're on the right path right start reviving some of these old franchises breathe new life into them and right. turn years i mean make something new make something hand them fresh. out here here's your assignment here's your assignment here's yeah. your assignment that's what you're working on make it good you got five years yeah <laughs> bring us the next conquer mm-hmm. yeah that's what we want for real oh yeah, yeah for sure that yeah, still makes that's... me mad <laughs> i miss conquer i, I do too why, so did, why does konami not make a new one who what D- konami doesn't and that who did contra no, rare rare did contra Oh, I said what did I said conquer? Oh, I thought you said contra, yeah. dude. My bad, conquer. Yeah, yeah. I've also mentioned in that uh, banjo and kazooie. Yeah, I've heard that the possible um, sequel for it, a true sequel, which well, I don't know if that's it's good just or whether bad. or not they'll do it right. I swear, I thought you said contra, <laughs> conquer, conquer, conquer. Damn it, my ears Talk are bad. About today. Rare conquer. Yeah, I was like, well, I, I miss contra too. Damn it. <laughs> Just missed the whole point. All right. Well, I'm going to move on to our release dates since somebody's got selective hearing. Yeah, I can't help it. <laughs> I was at work all day today. All right. Uh, what we got on June 5th? We've got Vampire with a Y. Oh, okay. I'm excited about that game. Okay. What's it about? It's about vampires. I mean, okay, it looks like it's it. in downtown London, I think, like sitting like early times. You have to sell me on more than just yeah, it's no, about I vampires. don't know. Like, I haven't really. <laughs> I, like done my homework on it, but so like just seeing it, passing and reading little bits and pieces here and there. Okay, I'm excited about that game. So check out a trailer. Is what you're telling? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Check it out. See what you think. All right. Well, Vampire's coming out on June 5th. PS4, Xbox One, PC. Then we have the Infectious Madness of Doctor Decker for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle for 
PS4, Nintendo Switch, and PC, plus a DLC character pack for those as well. The Shape of the World for PC, uh, PS4 and PC. <coughs> Hamrick for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Happy Birthdays for Nintendo Switch. Onrush for PS4, Xbox One. Far Cry DLC uh, called The Hours of Darkness for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Is that Far Cry 5? Far Cry 5. Excuse Is me. Is that the... Uh, I think it's the Vietnam oh, DLC. I didn't know if it was going to be the... Because I've heard there's going to be zombie stuff. Yeah, that might be it. I don't know. I thought um, that's what it was. I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know. I'm that's gonna zombie stuff, I'm I want to play it. it. I do want to play it. Yeah. Just got to get around to it. Uh, then there's some Warhammer 40,000 Inquisitor DLC called Martyr for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Then we got Shaq Fu, the Legend Reborn, oh baby. God, I'm glad oh you God. said that. I just seen a headline that said, you can fight Kanye West as Obama on there. Oh, that must wow. be those special characters. <laughs> yes, dude. Oh, I'm going to whip Kanye's ass. <laughs> So that's coming out for, if you want to go kick Kanye's ass with uh, <laughs> former President Barack Obama, PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. You got them all. You got you got your choice. Yeah. Uh, then you've got the Elder Scrolls Online Summer Set for PS4 and Xbox One. Nabungas uh, Ambition. <laughs> Did you say Nabungas? Nabungas. <laughs> Nabungas. Uh, for PS4. Riddled Corpse EX for PS4 and uh, PlayStation Vita. Now, on June 6th, you have Riddled Corpses EX for Xbox One coming out, plus Shape of War or Shape of the World coming out for Xbox One and Nintendo Switch. Then we have Bloodstained Curse of the Moon for Xbox One, which that looks like... Um, I hear a lot of people relaying that to uh, Castlevania. Yeah, I believe it's in, I think, somebody that... I think the guy that actually made Castlevania oh, nice. did something with that game. Uh, but on, that's also on PS4, isn't it? Well, I, it might be. I think it came out sooner on PS4. Maybe, maybe. maybe it has. Because like some, some of these release dates, like I said, there was some coming out a day later than the yeah. others. So. Let me get through them. And we'll I'm sorry, out. dude. I'm just excited. It's <laughs> I know. You, you, get, you get all excited. Uh, June 7th, we have MotoGP 18 for Xbox One and PC. Banner Saga 2 for the Nintendo Switch. Games for Toddlers 2 for the 3DS. And Storm Chaser Tornado Alley for the 3DS. Then on June 8th, we have Sushi Strikers, Way of the Sushido. <laughs> this is terrible. Nintendo Switch and 3DS. Legendary 11 for Nintendo Switch. And Slime Son Super Slime Edition for the Nintendo Switch. I hate reading these names for these games sometimes. It's always the Nintendo game. Why yeah, is it? It's always the weird ones. Uh, now, for the month of June, we have the Xbox Games with Gold. For Xbox One, we have Assassin's Creed Chronicles Russia. And that will be available on June 1st through the 30th. Then Smite Gold Bundle. Did I say that right? Smite Gold Bundle. There we go. That, that sounds better. Uh, that'll be available from June 16th to July 15th. Then your 360 games are Sonic and All-Star Racing Transformed from June 1st to the 15th. Then Lego Indiana Jones 2 The Adventure Continues from June 16th through the 30th. No word on the PS Plus games this year. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I do have them. Huh? I do have them. You got them? I do. Good, because I yeah. can't find it for some reason. PS Plus games for June. We have for the PS4, XCOM 2, and Trials Fusion. Why do I feel like Trials Fusion has been on there before? It has. That's what I thought. But it's an amazing game. It is. I have it. Okay. Maybe that's. I just. I or feel maybe like it I, hasn't been on there. Maybe I've just bought it and they just plastered it all over the store. Maybe I've seen it advertised so much because I was like, why do I feel like I've seen this a hundred times? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, free games for June for PS4. On PS3, it's Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Future Soldier and Zombie Driver HD Complete Edition. Then on the Vita, we have Squares and Atomic Ninjas. Then your Twitch Prime free games for June are The Banner Saga, The Banner Saga 2, Strafe Millennium Edition, and Treadnoughts. So get your free games, people. I like Did you games. ever look and see on the the Twitch Prime stuff, can you get a code for your PS4? Uh, no. I didn't know if they allowed you to pick a platform. No. Since it's like, essentially, they have an, uh, a desktop app that you have to play it through. Oh, Much okay. like Steam's gotcha. uh, app. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. So, um, I have a quick review because I just I didn't I didn't have much this week. I what, was struggling. What game did you pick? Uh, well, it's not an indie game. 
That's why I said it's a it's a slap desk little review. So we're just gonna run through it real quick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I wasn't feeling good this week. Uh, goddamn allergies just kind of knocking me down. So it's the time of year. I just found a game and I was like, you know what? I can talk about that real quick. <laughs> You're probably gonna be like, really that game? But uh, most people can only remember a few of the old Zapper games for the Nintendo. Like Duck Hunt is essentially yeah. the only one that anyone can remember right that's the only one isn't it well there there were a few more operation was wolf another one that i owned it was called hogan's alley oh i remember that's that kind of yeah. like a little target shooter yeah target shooter yeah. and uh, you have to make sure you don't shoot the cops i always the shot kids. the old lady no no it was the cop wasn't it He'd yeah point at you like that, that and i always mm-hmm. shot him uh, they were kind of like the carnival shooters but there was another one that always intrigued me that i used to play it was called gumshoe now, the story for what it was, because Nintendo games really don't have stories per se, but uh, you it focused on an ex-FBI agent who is a private eye known only as Mr. Stevenson. He receives a ransom note from a mafia boss called King Dom, who kidnapped his daughter, Jennifer, and Stevenson is tasked to collect five Black Panther diamonds. Way ahead of his time, Black Panther. <laughs> Uh, and he's got to do this within 24 hours in order to see his daughter again. So there's your plot for what you got to play. Now, what's interesting about this game is there was not really a lot of games like it at the time because it was using the zapper to play because he would move on his own. Right. Okay. I thought. And then okay. you had to shoot the obstacles out of his way. Mm-hmm. And then if he needed to jump, you'd just shoot him and he would kind of jump. And so you had to be very calculating and how you aimed. So it was target practice in a way, you know. Right. But just making sure that he's he's clear to, to walk wherever he goes. So it was a very different type of game. Very frustrating, too, because if I, your aim was <laughs> garbage. I rented that game from uh, Rent-A-Video. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. I think I had a, a br- buddy of mine that I always borrowed it from. And uh, the music that's probably playing right now, because oh, I'll put it over yeah, there. I hear it. Yeah, I hear it. Uh, it was always something I was just like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Dun, 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 dun. And just, I'd listen to it. But there isn't really much to say about the game. Like I said, I didn't really do a whole lot on this. And there's, <laughs> again, there's not much to it. You just play through the game. Boom, done. That's it. But what I did find interesting, just looking into it, is the game's designer, Yoshio Sakamoto, actually has a fantastic career under his belt for a uh, game designer. Uh, he actually was the game designer for Donkey Kong Jr., Metroid, and Kid Icarus. And he actually went to direct Super Metroid and uh, was even the producer on several WarioWare titles. So um, just Where's, remember, kids, even the Kid simplest Icarus? ideas can lead to bigger things. Where is Kid Icarus? I don't know. That's the one franchise they won't revive. I know. Like they did that one for 3DS, right? And it took them, what, 30 years? Yeah. It's crazy. So, and you think the the Switch would be all over and ripe for Kid Icarus? Dude, just do it like it was. Leave it, you know, like that style. It has that, it doesn't have to be extravagant. Just make a Kid Icarus game where I can play as Kid Icarus. Mm -hmm. Damn it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not going to play it because I don't have a Switch. But. It would still be fun. Yeah. Just just to see what they could do to it today. Yeah. Because it was even cool just seeing him in Super Smash Brothers. It was like, oh, cool. You know, there he is. Right. So, uh, but, yeah, that was that was my half-assed little review. Because I had nothing. I'm sorry. I just didn't feel like it. I was busy and tired and didn't feel like doing anything. So that it's was okay. it. It's okay. It's all. I'm curious, real quick, before it gets wrapped up, mm-hmm. what games coming out this year are you guys looking forward to? Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Man. Spider-Man for him. I think uh, for me, it, it came out God of War was the one I was looking forward to. I, I've got one coming out about a week. Jurassic World Evolution. Oh, and that oh, yeah. game is awesome. I actually might actually uh, be getting a code for that. Don't know, Ooh. but I, I might. I might be. Nice. So, uh, if I do, there will be a review for it. I'm, I'm, I actually looked into it. It, lo- it did look pretty interesting. Yeah. It does. So, uh, I've heard good, you know, just all the talk about it is good so far. Mm-hmm. I haven't heard anything bad. So, uh, fingers crossed. Since, yeah. since we're also talking about E3, the only thing I'm looking forward to really hearing about how to E3 is Metro. Yeah. I love oh, the yeah. Metro games. How about that game? Mm-hmm. Metro, so, what was it? First what? Light? No. And last, last Light was last the Last Light, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. God, it looks so awesome. God. I actually got into it because I loved Fallout so much. Mm-hmm. stuck between fallout games i'm like i want more apocalypse yeah. and then you get to see it. i'm so stupid because i just patch it together i'm like all right so this is the russian side of fallout even <laughs> though clearly these universes aren't going together right. screw it it's a great game though the way you had to you know have you played it 
I played a little bit, and I guess it was just catching me at a wrong time. I, I, I was having a hard time getting into it. it was, well, it's, you know, it's based off of that um, that Russian guy's what novel. Yeah. I can't yep. Remember the name of it? Might be called Metro. It yeah. is. Yeah. It's like the Metro, I think. Yeah. It's. I don't know. It's just I think a, a lot of games universe. hit me at the wrong time sometimes because people yeah. be like, "This is a great game," and I'm like, "Yeah." The second one's better than the first. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, they're both good games yeah. for what they are. I but I'm always to willing to give something a second chance. Yeah. I gave yeah. Dragon Age two chances, and it let me down both yeah. times. They, if you went back a third time, it let you down again. That so, game is terrible. I just, I don't know. I got suckered. I feel like. Yay. Yeah. But that's our show. Uh, I'd like to thank all of our patrons uh, who uh, make this show and other shows we do possible. And uh, all of our listeners for being here every week. Your love and support is greatly appreciated. If you are interested in supporting the show, you can go to patreon.com slash pencil and paper productions and uh, chuck in a buck. I've recently made a few changes to the reward tiers. If you want to go take a look around, see if anything might uh, be a little bit more enticing for you, we'd appreciate it. You can follow the show on Twitter at Super Mega Crash. Like and leave reviews on iTunes, the Apple Store, Stitcher, Podbean, YouTube, wherever you listen. Wherever you want, it doesn't matter. It's everywhere. Everywhere. It's like Santa Claus. And we're still number one on Venus, right? Damn right. <laughs> There's nobody else there yet. That's right. Whatever happened to that guy? I don't know. I don't know either. He just maybe we we insulted him. I wasn't trying to insult him. I just didn't know what he was talking about. I wanted to know what Venus was. Yeah. We were the number one podcast on Venus, and I was like, that is awesome. What is that? Yeah, that was never got an answer. So, yeah. but anyway, guys, uh, I'm Stephen White. I'm Todd Stark. Decoy, tell everyone where they can find you. Yep, you can find me on YouTube at Pixel Pixel. It's all one word, and the P's are capital. P's are whatever. capital. Make sure you pay attention to that. Join us again next time, Super Mega Crash siblings. But until then, game on! <laughs>